Okay, welcome back. So in this session, we're going to talk a little bit about third normal form, data vault, and star schema, and just do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of the way the models look, uh, what the impact is on kind of the relationships and the number of tables, and just in general, uh, how we might see these things panning out. So first of all, with um, operational systems that we have been building for the last 20 years and still today, uh, the optimal modeling approach is to use third normal form. So we tend to uh, model uh, things in operational systems using third normal form pretty much exclusively at this point. No matter which systems you're, you're working with, uh, the paradigm is pretty much third normal form. Um, Data Vault, uh, as you know, is really the uh, ultimate choice for, for modeling the enterprise data warehouse. That's where it uh, is really uh, uh, built to deliver its value. Uh, it delivers its value because of the uh, ability to deal with history, uh, with all data all the time, and to be auditable. And then with Star Schema, uh, with Star Schema, we actually use that primarily for data march. Now, again, the discussion has come up uh, with Type 2 conform dimensions in a federated uh, deployment. Uh, people are using uh, uh, dimensional uh, Star Schema modeling beyond data march to to this uh, kind of a federated EDW approach. Again, not something we recommend here. But if we look at the broader picture again, um, as we move data from these operational systems to staging, uh, to an enterprise data warehouse format, and into the uh, uh, data marts, um, we kind of see this breakout of third normal form in that first box. Uh, staging could be pretty flat as well, third normal form. Um, enterprise Data Warehouse is Vault, and, and then we get into Star Schema. So let's take a look at a, at, at a sample um, business model looking at uh, third normal form modeling. So in this case here, um, we have this, uh, this construct of saying we just have a simple sale, a simple sale that is dealing with a product that's been part of a uh, sale receipt, let's say, that a customer has, has walked in to purchase something, and the customer belongs to a certain class. And then we have this line item table which helps to break up that many-to-many -many, uh, relationship. And in effect, the line item is, is an associative entity, um, but that's uh, you know, effectively where, where it is. Now, one of the things about this model, uh, you'll notice, is that the uh, key structures, uh, the foreign keys um, for the relationships, as in here with the customer, uh, are um, embedded inside along all the details. Now, if we look at a similar case to this in Data Vault, here's the Data Vault uh, view, um, you can see that here we have uh, the hub called sale. Now, keep in mind the hub called sale is just containing those four keys that we use uh, in a typical uh, Data Vault environment. So, if you look at the hub here, it's got a hub sale sequence ID, that new primary key. It has a load date timestamp, and it has a record source. Um, the other thing we have here, of course, is the uh, business key that came from the source system, which was uh, the sale ID. If you look across to these uh, uh, satellite details, all the descriptive information concerning that sale is being involved here in the satellite. We then over here have a hub that's called customer and a hub that's called product. So. Just as with the, the prior one, you see that we have primary looking hubs that deal with the main business entities. And then we have links. So these two link structures here are just forming a relationship between the sale and the customer, and the other one forms this relationship between the sale and then down to the product over here. Well, what's interesting is, is that this one here, this link customer sale, is now an associative entity for that many-to-many -many relationship because we assume every relationship is many-to-many. -many. And what's in here now really is just the two foreign keys. Right here we've got the sequence ID from the customer and the sequence ID from the sale. The other three that we're using in here, the other three attributes, are those that are required for enterprise data warehousing. New key, date timestamp, record source has to be added to all our structures. So. If you were to compare apples to apples here, if you subtract three attributes from uh, all these table structures, you're looking more at, at what would be similar in third normal form. As we move into the star schema, we start to put um, descriptive information uh, back together into single satellites instead of like here we have 
customer has two different satellites off it. So if we get into the, uh, into the star schema, we now have a um, uh, dimension called customer. This dimension has all the descriptive information in it. We have a, uh, a class, we have a product dimension, and in these cases, these components are um, containing all of their own descriptive information as well as the key structure. So they're, they're both in there. Now you also notice that the class is directly attached to the fact uh, instead of being um, snowflaked out, that is to say extended out from the customer dimension. And this is really best practices for star schema. And within star schema, we want to try to make sure that we're not uh, getting beyond that single relationship away from the fact. You'll also notice in here um, the fact has uh, some uh, primarily foreign keys and some metrics style information, and that's pretty much the, uh, the primary way we build those out. Now, um, if we go back to recap for a minute, operational systems, definitely third normal form. Um, data Vault is for our enterprise data warehouse. Star Schema for data marts. That's, uh, that's the uh, appropriate way to go. Um, using uh, third normal form uh, for, for EDW, using uh, uh, Star Schema for, for EDW happens, but it's just not recommended uh, and it causes problems. So the thing about operational systems is they're concerned with rapid, uh, efficient data capture at the point of sale, uh, transactional processing style data, things that has to come in at, at a high speed and have to be captured accurately based on the current um, defined reference checks and, and, and data validity that we're looking for. In the data vault, we're looking at historical data. So we're looking at time size data, we're looking at uh, data from multiple different sources. It's integrated. It's not deleted. It's that primary data store. Our main concern in this layer is that it's complete, that we have a complete auditable path of all enterprise data. And then when we look towards the SAR schema, it's for analysis. So uh, data marts really are more concerned with how can I present information using dimensions, which, um, by the way, uh, we use the word buy when we're talking about dimensions. Business users are very accustomed to dealing with uh, analysis and business problems using the word buy. And not BI, but BY. Um, BI as well. But what that really means is, hey, show me this week's sales by region, by customer, by product, by salesperson. Anytime you say buy, we're talking about a dimension. And that's the approach we need to get um, and that's the, uh, the dimensional focus that we're looking for in our data mart. So operational third normal form, because the primary thing is, is capture and accuracy. Uh, data vault for EDW, because it's about history and being complete and auditable. The star schema for analysis, because it's about dimensional. It's about being able to communicate that information for analysis purposes. Um, so that's the recap, and we'll see you again in the next session.